from those two groups playing at the same time, all of the initial matches start at the same time as well, because Take TV have a bit of a schedule to keep to today. They have to be done within seven hours. So what we're going to do is we're going to cast just like normal. We're going to have a couple of different PCs and different matches. Um, we're going to focus on TLO Mana. We'll bring you updates from Solo versus Hurricane. And what we're going to do is, if I'm feeling kind of alive at the end of the day, we might even cast some of the matches that didn't get seen by English casts from replays. But that kind of depends on how the day goes and how I feel. And I'm not going to lie, right now it doesn't feel pretty brilliant to be warty. Hmm. It feels um, pretty crap to be warty right now, actually. But um, we live with it. We get through it. Um, so yeah, what's up guys? Sorry, we're a little bit late starting today. That's mostly my fault. <clears throat> I had to go and sort shit out and try and get some stuff to try and make my throat maybe survive day two of this event. About an hour and a half ago, I really didn't think I was ever possibly going to cast today, but... And then I was like, I said to Naruto, man, I'm really fucking ill. And he was like, Wardy, you cannot let me down. You cannot let the people of Wardy TV down. You have to stream. So here I am. So it might not be the best casting, it might be pretty terrible casting, but whatever it ends up being, I hope you enjoy the game today, guys. We're gonna kick it off with a best of five between the Team Liquid players to the bottom right hand side. It's our Blue Zerg TLO. And to the upper left hand side, the Red Frost player is Mana. Who actually had a pretty good run yesterday, taking down Namshaw to get himself through into the round of 16. TLO had a pretty decent run himself. He uh, ran through couple of strong players and actually looked pretty good while doing so. Uh, TLO looking pretty unstoppable honestly yesterday. That was a pretty solid performance from him. You guys give me a second, I'm actually going to get the groups up here. Show you guys a little bit of what was happening yesterday. Um, I'm not sure you, but tell you. Yeah, TLO came through his group after beating first of all Probe and then Daishi. He looked pretty good in those EVPs. He lost one game where he's caught a bit off guard by multi-pronged harassment. Uh, he looked pretty good in the kind of more macro, straight-up standard games, so... I think TLO is definitely his favorite going into this, but again, Mana played some good games yesterday as well. He started out losing to Namshaw, but then he beat Cass, and then he was able to beat uh, Namshaw 2-0 to come through and win that series, so... This could be a bit of an interesting one. As we get set up here, and look to see what's gonna happen in the early stages. It's not a tournament with our Team Liquid team kill. I was thinking the exact same thing myself. I was like, man, even in online events nowadays, you know, anything with more than a $100 prize pool just has to be a Team Liquid team kill to be a legitimized tournament, you know? So it's, um, pretty interesting as we're going to be seeing this Oracle on the way out the Stargate in the upper left-hand side of the map, getting set up and ready to roll into this over the next few minutes of the game. A very standard start from both players. TLO going up to three hatcheries. Mana going into Stargate play. We might see multiple Stargates coming down after this. That's how Mana has been enjoying playing lately. He's been going for a lot of styles that involve Mass Oracle. And he's been using it to maximum effect as well quite a lot. So you can see uh, Mana setting up here. Oracle pops out. And a second Oracle already on the way. So we'll see if it is indeed going to be that. Obviously right now it could just be, again, that single Stargate initially. And just going from that point onwards. Otherwise, um, yeah, I'm just going to be seeing overall, just kind of moving around, looking to see what's up and what's happening. I'm just going to be seeing, and again, the game, the game just kind of calming down, settling down for the first few minutes. Obviously the Oracle is out, but it's not even moving across the map just yet. So even the kind of action we would expect at this stage, isn't really coming on down. TLO gets a nice scout on the third base coming in. So he knows that's coming in nice and early. Gives him a chance to get some Zerglings up if he wants to try and delay and deny that. But she is starting to build. He's getting eight of them in production. And Voidray on the way out to help clean out these overlords. Or this overlord specifically, which is coming across the map for that scout. Interestingly enough, TLO only ever sent one overlord across the map. Rather than the typical double overlord, which you quite often send as a Zerg play. You send both your first overlords across and you actually end up losing both of them to a Phoenix. It's quite an interesting kind of thing from TLO to just say, well, why do I send that second Overlord across? Why don't I just keep it at home and not lose anything as the Oracles do poke in for the first three worker kills? And there's the extra Stargates again going into that mass Oracle player style. And TLO from here will want to play into missile upgrades, Hydralists, and obviously a lot of it is just making sure that these Oracles don't do so much that the game begins to snowball. As you're going to see TLO sacrificing the Queen to get an Oracle kill. I would say that's worthwhile to get the Queen for the Oracle there. He did just snipe it with that final shot. 
That was a, that was a risky decision, because obviously if he doesn't get the Oracle, he's just giving up a Queen for nothing. And then, you know, that snowballing that we were just talking about would begin. Instead, we see here, he's able to uh, well, play it a bit differently as we're going to see these Zerglings. Going to come in, a probe gets taken down, a few depths are nearby as well, a couple of pylons going to get dropped. So a couple of pylons going to get added in, and obviously those depths nearby to be able to sit between them. The simulator just on the way up, and you're setting up into the free base play. The extra gases obviously go a long way to helping you build something other than just pure Oracle at this stage. There's a few seconds just gathering up towards the third base, which is where the lair comes down. Multiple spore crawls per base right now. TLO just really going to make sure that these oracles are not going to be able to do extra damage. And again, the less damage the oracles do, the better time TLO has. And honestly, the more spores we have anyways, the better it is for you as well, because it's not just about defending against, um, it's not really just about defending against, like, um, you know, the oracle harassment. It's also about keeping your hydras and queens alive while, you know, when mass oracle comes in. If you've got spores, they will drastically change the way the fight goes for you. And a couple of extra spores will go a long way. Here we go. For example, right here, one queen goes down, but it actually gets the, uh, Void Ray for it, so as the Void Ray, at least another Oracle flies through multiple spores on the natural. A miss rally by Mana, which costs him what is now his second Oracle of this game. And he's going to come in and go for this Nexus, but the reality is this Oracle is already on top of them, and he will not be able to get the kill. A nice idea from TLO, but obviously with an Oracle there, and he's able to defend and deflect. Mana not able to get him up enough out of that. Not sure about these links and Banes coming across the map. I mean, the reality is you just pop the pulsar beams and the Banes are going to go down instantly. The links are once again not really going to do any damage on that Nexus. They're definitely not going to do enough to get a cancel. So, I guess one of the things it does do is it wastes a little bit of the Oracle energy. So there isn't as much of it around. As we actually see a little bit of an interesting setup here from TLO in the early stages. Infestation Pit coming down as well as a Spire setting up into... Obviously a little bit of a different setup here than what you might have expected with the Hydralisks. What he's obviously going to go for is probably something along the lines of... I imagine like, um, like obviously the Infestors for the Fungal Groves, and then I imagine some sort of, well, Corruptor-based player style. Obviously making Mutalisks would be great against the Oracles initially, but then all of a sudden you have a bunch of uh, Phoenix being made at a time, and it doesn't really matter if you made Mutalisks, they will just melt and disappear. And we've seen that hive tech on the way up as well from TLO. So you'll have something to use the corruptors for once they have helped to clean out the oracles, etc. So he'll be able to go into those broodlords, obviously, is the way he'll be able to make use of those corruptors further in the game from that point. What's up, the big one, TV? How you doing? Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Do you appreciate it? Get some love in the chat. For a brand new fresh sub. Coming on in for the Twitch Prime. I don't know why I'm saying things in funny voices today. Try and make up for the fact that I, I'm still tired. I've been tired for like five days. It's really feeling fucking... It feels like five days. It's actually been like two or three. Feels like five. Feels like a week. Feels like an eternity. It's crazy. <clears throat> Thank you so much for subscribing, man. Do appreciate it. Link's coming up to the top side as we see a fifth base being taken by TLO to the far right. A couple of robot facilities dropping down towards the third base. That plus two melee upgrade coming in from TLO. Bailing speed coming up, the new parasite coming through on the infestation pit, and that burrow on the main base hatchery. Oracle's still flying all over the shop looking to see what's up. It actually was three mutalisks here. Um, I guess it's interesting, you know, like a very small number of mutas into corruptors, because the mutas will just force the oracles to turn away, right? I mean, they're not going to necessarily kill them, but there's no point losing one or two for three. So it does make a lot of sense, although now TLO flies into the cannons, and that's obviously not too pretty. But going into Corruptors behind this obviously then says, okay, cool, I'm going to go into Corruptors, and with the Corruptors I'm going to be able to fight against those Oracles properly. He's also got Neo Parasite on the way, he's going to Ling Bane drop in. So, I mean, everything we kind of talked about that might be kind of normal and standard in this game as a way to kind of approach the ZVP in the kind of the Mass Oracle playstyle. Well, it's TLO, and so obviously everything I talked about is just completely, uh, no, completely irrelevant in comparison. Because TLO always has fun, interesting, creative ways to... Well, find uh, other bits and pieces. Then drop comes on in. We're just going to be seeing these uh, Zerglings coming through as well. So things coming in. And we're going to be seeing the uh, little bit of damage being done, but a nice defense from Mana as this gets cleaned up.
Phoenix as well, though. He is uh, overlooked or going to get taken down. Sorry, had a little bit of mayhem mess up there with the uh, second stream. But, um, yeah. Continue to just set up into this and see where we, uh, where we end up going. So Oracles keep flying around. It's kind of interesting, the fact that he forced the Phoenix out of the meters. It actually kind of obviously helps man to kind of defend against these overlords. You see pushing forward a couple of rude lords. I think it's this Tempest out though. This transition came in quite nicely for mana. We saw the, um, you know, we saw the uh, corrupt, uh, sorry, the Fleet Beacon coming down. So he's got Tempest up already. He's got an answer to brood lords, honestly. Feeling caught in stasis. Man, uh, coming up to five bases. Yellow reposition and maybe come in towards that. Remember, Tielo does have New York Power Side you can utilize here as well if you would like. The question is, how does he really try and fight this first Broodlord? Gonna get taken down there. Nice revelation on the Infestors as well. Corruptors coming forward and taking some shots. Tempest gonna start taking some damage though. Those Corruptors now getting stormed. That's gonna bring them a lot lower. The Lings will get rid of that uh, base. One single fungal growth was used. Oh, these Infestors need to be careful, man. They are in range of the Tempest. Very, uh, well, they're very nearly in range, but they are definitely revealed. And so the vision is on them. Tail has to be very cautious with those because the last thing you want is to be losing your full energy in Fest because they take an absolute eternity to set back up. Queen's coming across the map with some transfusers available. We'll be able to get some of these corruptors on full health again. There's a nice fungal growth comes down. Grabs a few units, which doesn't really do too much. The storm comes down as we also see those lings running in. The actual neural parasites, I don't know what that is, an arc on here. He's actually doing he was doing a nice little bit of damage with it. Corruptors coming forwards again, gonna get rid of the void rate initially. Rupal still in the back, the Zaire army being pushed away. A very positional based fight going down right now here in the start of game number one, in the start of the series. Game number one at the moment. Rupal still in position, well and away at the natural, which is going to be what forces Mana to eventually come in and fight this year. But more Corruptors on the way up. Love the fact we see Void Rays on the way. However, if those Void Rays get caught by the Infestors and Neural Parasites, that could be pretty deadly because then those Void Rays could come in and they could be used as a way to fight against the Tempest. Corrupt is going to commit in once again before too many Void Rays are out, but they are starting to come on forwards, and that is really going to be the one thing that will make this Corrupt account melt a little bit faster. Fungal Grubs coming down as well whenever possible. There's a Neural Parasite on one of these low, uh, Void Rays. He's going to grab another as well, but now the Oracle's coming through. They will clean those vo uh, they clean those Infestors up, so the Neurals fade away. Corrupt is still trading out here. There's a couple more Corruptors flying in as we still see Zerglings attacking the Natural and all sorts. Now they're running around to the third base those cannons that were made to help against Mutas earlier and just again I guess against general run buys they are doing their job they're going very well so far and they're definitely doing what they need to Broodlord getting picked off as well a crazy bit of action so far here in game number one of this best of five and again it's a very positionally focused fight where a lot of it was about those Broodlords being in position and these you know kind of frozen these used to kind of push through the ramp where the fungals can be more effective etc Obviously, the corruptors were then protecting the bruise and forced the manager to fight, anyways. So, a very interesting fight. And it comes out 132 to 134 supply. Obviously, TLO's army supply is way down, but he's got much, many more drones. His income is in a huge lead. But you can see that he's definitely lost a lot more of his army, but he will bounce back in army supply a lot faster than Mana would be able to because of the income lead. So, an interesting little scenario there is again Ling's getting caught by Stasis. This is just going to be seeing the uh, oracles coming through. I think that the feeling if we look at resources as lost, it'll be very mana favored. And there it is, 5,000 resources lost in advantage to mana. Zalton and Archon just going to be gathering together now. We're going to be seeing these Zerglings coming in towards the upper side. A few drones to the right as well. TLO just keeping up to date with his economy, spreading them out, getting his extra gases rolling, making sure that, you know, he has 80 drones, make sure you make use of them all. Seven oversaturated here would not be a bad time to think about taking this base. Obviously, he's already come down to long distance mine, and so you will select one of those drones and throw down the hatchery here as well. So, hatchery does get thrown on down. Zerglings going to move around both sides of the map, some to the left, some to the top. And we're just going to be seeing these uh, High Templar. It's going to sit behind the Zealots and the Depths. And then this will split themselves up slightly, going to go in towards the natural expansion. Really find too much of an opportunity though. Yeah, I guess they're gonna get towards the uh, natural and they're gonna be able to nipple away, nipple away at the cannon there for a little bit at least. So, cannon taking a little bit of damage here. You see these things coming into the left hand side, gonna be nibbling away a couple of these gateways as well. So, some damage being done around the map at the moment. A lot of oracles here, still for mana. 
Unfortunately, he's flying on in. There's a lot of bull smoke goes, though. He only gets a couple of drones in exchange for an oracle. Obviously, not really worth well. Not really the way he wanted this to go. Carriers are on the way up. And they're going to be joining the fleet of void rays, which is already going to be a great answer to the corruptors that are on the way out at the moment. Some corruptors on the map. He actually needs a lot more, I would imagine. Might be time for TLO to think about adding some Vipers into the fray as well. He does have that Hive Tech, obviously, that's why he has Broodlords. So he does have the chance to go into that. But can he, uh, can he actually find a way to use it? We actually see um, more Broodlords being walked in. Which is interesting, because it sort of says that, uh, you know, it sort of says, hey, I don't, um, I guess I don't expect to be kind of like needing all my corruptors. He's obviously very confident of the infestors and queens he has on the ground to be able to fight this. And obviously, just wants the brutes for air to ground. But again, it feels like TLO's air to air army is kind of weak, right? He's got you know parasites, three corruptors, and ten queens against ten voids, two carriers, three tempers. It doesn't seem like it adds up. Well, the army right now for mana going over to the right hand side. Broodlord's going to come on over. The carriers will find some action. I'm guessing you'll be able to Neo Parasite these first couple carriers, which are in the back of Void Ray, too. And you'll be able to start fighting here. So TLO is, uh, okay, well, he's going to get these, uh, used for free at least. He'll just be able to attack move from now. And, uh, obviously, continue to attack move just to make sure that he, uh, doesn't lose anything. Keeps the neurals, is what I'm trying to say. So nice, uh, this was a good by TLO, just in position to make sure that Mana can't really take advantage of that position that he was in there. I was going to try and uh, push around or so, but... Yeah, just, uh... Unable to as these Zerglings continue to move on over. You will see a fifth Nexus on the way from Mana as well. What's up, Taco stuff? Coming in with the tier 30, 15, 1. Thank you for the tier 46, mate, do appreciate. You see this Nexus coming up to the top side, a few more investors on the way out. And Zergen's gonna go up the left side here, run on by in towards the third. Just try to do a little bit more. Some Zelts and knock on. And maybe get surrounded. Yeah, these things are actually doing quite a lot. I love it. TLO just playing slow and steady against the uh, his opponent right now. As you can be seeing the uh Yeah, this kind of just taking a little bit more damage here. Brood Lords to the right hand side. Only a couple of them that are actually gonna be kind of sacrificed here, it feels like. Kind of just getting left behind the rest of the armies all the way down south. Yes, a few of the broods are up here with some investor support. Yeah, they'll just continue to move around the map right now, looking for the opportunities. Coming in towards a 20 minute game number one here to start us off and takes Penthouse Party number three, day two. Remember, this is the round of 16. And it's best of five in each of these games today in group stages A, B, C, and D. Tomorrow we have the double elimination playoff bracket. That's going to be a lot of fun, and hopefully you guys are going to be ready for that. Tomorrow should be pretty awesome. A few more carriers on the way up. The Zergling is going to go over to the left hand side. Let's go and see what they can get up to. Queen's going to continue to push Crip Spread forwards as well. We're going to actually see an Observer going to get taken down here. Nice little sort of pick off. As you see, well, a little bit of a fight going to start on out. Rootlord's going to kind of clean up anything on the ground, but I guess that lack of vision is kind of uh, hurting a little bit. And the uh, spores do help a little bit with that there. There is those Infestors ready for Fungal Growth. He gets the Void Rays. That's going to be all he really gets for now, though. He has got Link's counterattack and just shutting down production yet again on the other side. The problem is, can he still deal with the air army? I love this chain set of fungals he's got going for himself. Now Corruptor's kind of fighting in without the real numbers that are needed here. High Templar is uh, actually going to be uh, caught and he's going to drop the storms on the Protoss army. TLO currently storming these voyages with the High Templar he neural parasited. And that's a pretty big deal. He is losing a lot of his army anyways, though, despite this. However, some of these Void Rays and Tempest, etc. are getting fairly low on HP. And TLO still actually has a lot of money to spend in terms of replacing and rebuilding here. 16 more Corruptors on the way up. And we've seen more of these units from Mana once again, just gathering to, uh, between these couple of bases. Just starting to gather these here, as we're going to be seeing the uh, Spockles. We're going to start taking some damage lings. About running in there momentarily, but decide not to. And Infestor gets feedback this time around. Jello is back up there in terms of numbers of army. Still just trying to fight now and then against these uh, voids, etc., that run a bit too far forwards. Things going down, those spores will start to help out, but it's those interceptors that are going to be tanking a lot of the spore crawler shots. And that's going to be obviously 
not really much progress actually being made by TLO if those interceptions are essentially endless. Sami up the right side again. We're going to see once again the link counter attacks to the left. Mana doesn't have a lot of eco. You know, he's not got a lot of bases to run to or to fall back on or anything. And he's managed to just lose some of his production here in the main base. These links come in and do enough. I mean, talking about pylons and stuff, I mean, Stargates especially. You kill these Stargates, you're going to be having the time of your life as the Zerg player. Because all of a sudden the Frost can't rebuild anything. However, it's sort of an unfortunate time because just as these links come in, carriers are popping. Unfortunately, yeah, it's not going to be as successful as it maybe could have been. Nice idea. It wasn't even bad. I mean, it's not really bad execution, right? It's just the, you know, bad timing. And it's just one of those things that's just a little bit unfortunate as we're going to be seeing investors, corruptors, and lings coming up to the top side to see what is next. Can you see these segments? Pulling back underneath the rest of these units. Forcing again, do a little bit of damage again. Still, these Zerglings is looking to counterattack from TLO. 22 minutes in, these guys have been back and forth with each other. As we see the uh, cannons. And yes, around, but the army is there, which is going to mean that the Lings do have to back away. Cannot realistically commit to that. Unit counts right now are 18 Corruptors, with the 8 Infestors and 2 Queens for support. Going to be playing against the 3 Tempest, 8 Carriers, and 7 Void Rays. Grand armies are pretty, pretty small on either side, and Arkham and Fuse are, it's really nothing too serious. This is a High Templar, and actually isn't any High Templar for Storm at the moment, so it's something that's uh, an intriguing decision. You generally expect those High Templars to be uh, added into this composition here. Man, I'm becoming a little bit gas stopped. If he loses this base, he's going to you know, really continue to have this issue, honestly. You're going to see a big fungal growth on top of a lot of the army. I'm just that TLO never looks to play with Vipers in these, I guess because he just assumes the Vipers will get targeted down before they can really get many abilities used on themselves. Feels as though that maybe they're not going to be as efficient as just playing with the sort of composition that he has right now. You can see the Corruptors coming up top side, but the support of Queens and Festers, etc. There's no way you can realistically fight that number of Void Rays. Rootlord going down as well. TLO's supply is just dropping all over the place. Now he's going to start Neural Parasite with these Investors. He's going to gain control of a few of these carriers for a little while. Another wave of Neuroparasites going down. From this, those uh, corruptors are going to drop down. Mana is just rolling over the army. GG. And Mana takes game number it's best of five. Bottom right hand side from Team Liquid, our blue Zerg player is TLO. Up left, our red Protoss, also from Team Liquid, it is Mana. Last game was a pretty interesting one, a battle for, you know, a battle into the later stages. And Tiello was not far away of making it happen, making it work. He just needed one more better fight. He just couldn't find the fight he needed towards the end of that game. So then I'm now into game number two. Looking to see how this is going to roll. Some momentary warty death. Oh man. Just feeling ill, yo. Not great, not great. There is. Gonna sit up. I'm ready to, uh. Roll on in towards our game number two here. I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen. Go TLO, is that small pox in the chat? Do let us know who you're cheering on, guys. Do let us know who you're supporting here in this series. Let me know who else you're actually looking forward to supporting here today throughout these group stages. It's um, an interesting set of groups. We don't really have any results really coming through anything just yet, I would say. Um, other than a couple of maps that have been won. Currently, uh, TLO versus Mana, Hero Marine versus Optimus, Solar versus Hurricane, and T Drogo versus Sword of. 
are all underway. Go, go, the little one. This is Taco stuff in the chat. What's up, Jen? How you doing? Protoss Pride, go mana. The Wardy hype. Loving it, loving it. Yeah, obviously, two, two very kind of... Uh, very popular players here, TLO and Mana. Quite the fan favourites and obviously people, well, players who people really like to cheer for, so... And so up into this. And looking to see what will happen. Brainbug SC saying TLO is in great form at the moment, and he will do it. Yeah, um... TLO been looking pretty good, actually, um, as of late. Has been, uh... Playing pretty, playing pretty well, honestly, so... Excited to see him continue to do well, and... I think the interesting thing <coughs> for TLO is that he's playing from Korea, right? So he's got in a few days of Korean practice in. It's pretty interesting, pretty cool to see how well he will do in this. Again, he looked pretty unstoppable yesterday. This is game one against Mana, but again, a really long back and forth game. It really could be argued that it was anyone's game for the taking. As you do see. And these couple of Zergans just moving around and seeing what they can get up to. Robotics facility is currently on the way up here for Mana as well. Forge on the way, building as well. Twilight Council coming on down. Just going to be playing a bit of a different opening then than the multiple Stargates and the Mass Oracle style. Obviously goes into one Oracle, and then she doesn't even go into a second one or a Phoenix or anything. Just one Oracle into the Robo, Twilight, and Forge. So obviously allows him to basically go into anything else he wants. He can go into a Charge upgrade, a Glaives upgrade. You know, you can basically go into whatever from the Twilight, um, you know, depending on how you want to follow this up. Charge would be the most common way. Plus one charge, and then get the robo up as well. For the initially, the warp prism to harass a beta or an observer. It's going to be the warp prism here. And then, of course, he can go into towards everything else he needs. Some immortals moving towards archons. And just play that charge lot immortal archon playstyle. Or is it going to be an Archon Charged Lot Immortal Place? So is just going to be a straight up all in. Four extra gates being added on. On top of just one already, that's five. Uh, sorry, on top of two already. And it's, well, you know, it's already going up towards six gates, now seven. So we're going to see a Charged Lot Archon, uh, Charge Archon all in with several archives coming through here as well. So an all in for Mana in game number two to try and get up to zero in this series. And TLO is going to be all about this defense to see if he can make it happen. Obviously, Taylor would love to be able to defend this and to go 1 1. Would not like to try and fight back from the 2 deficit. Taylor's going to start noticing, well, he's going to see the third base coming down. And he's going to come in, I mean, he'll probably get a pretty decent cancel on this, right? He's going to come in, get the cancel, and fight the Adept as well. The Oracle is here, sure, but, eh, I mean, it doesn't do too much damage too quickly. It's just one Oracle against that many Zerglings. And Taylor really just doesn't see this coming. Hydra's Den coming down. He just has no idea, and again, you could maybe argue that this is because he only invested into one overlord across the map rather than the regular two. You know, he doesn't have an overlord up on this top side, and because of that, he's not able to scout into the main base, see all of the gates, and all the rest of it. And right now, TLO probably feels that he's doing pretty well. He's denying the third nexus multiple times. He's not really letting anything happen, but here comes this attack into TLO's third. Now, he does actually have spines up, so maybe he does have a bit of a better idea about this than I'm giving him credit for. Mm, we're going to be seeing this first spine. And actually, I mean, the first couple of spines are actually very well positioned to be choked up and to minimize the damage. Archon's being surrounded here, and, well, one spine follow going down. The Queen's definitely helping, too. First Hydras are going to start popping shortly. Two more spines behind this mineral line. Going to come in in just a few moments as TLO is actually trying to reposition his spore crawlers to try and fight against the Warp Prism. Stop the micro potential coming in from that there. There's another spine crawler coming up. Drones already dropping, though. TLO might just be a little bit too late with this defense. You can see the spores actually will push the Warp Prism quite far away. One of the Archons inside of it very nearly going down. Problem is there still just isn't quite enough. We're going to be seeing a few more High Temple on the way out once again. A clean drop. It's GG. And TLO will go down 0-2 against Mana. TLO versus Mana. To the bottom right hand side, our Red Protoss play from Team Liquid. In this Team Liquid team kill, it is going to be Mana. Going up against the Blue Zerg top left, opening hatch gas pool. Here on Odyssey, it's TLO. Mana haven't had the best of years in StarCraft 2. I have to say, towards the end of the year here, he has started to come back on the up again a little bit. 
he sort of found his setting, found his footing, and he was really starting to gain some momentum again, which is obviously pretty great to see. <clears throat> As we just get set up here, and get into this third game, early stages will be defined by the tech choice of the pros player, and that is going to be a Stargate coming on down for mana. We have an Odyssey, and if required, a fourth map will be Mech Depot, followed by Interloper. Or maybe it's the other way around. I think it's Mech Depot, then Interloper, though. So those are a couple of maps to be remaining to be played, and so obviously TLO has to pick up wins on all three of those, or both of those, plus Odyssey here. If he wants to make it out into the winner's match of Group A, I want to say? I think Group A? You see the Stargate starting up the first Oracle, so it's coming on through here right from the get go. And let's see what this Oracle can get up to. Obviously, Tilo getting the scout though is kind of nice. Just knows what he's going to be playing against, at least for the first few minutes. And obviously, then he can start to react when it comes down to the later stages as well. This is the sort of map where you probably expect Mass Oracle play to come down on, because it really, that mobility of the Oracles really helps to defend what can be very difficult kind of uh, zerk positions and movements to defend uh, usually here on this map. So, uh, everything think the multiple Stargates might be the approach here for mana. Going into game number three, unless he has something like a sneaky all in up his uh, sleeves, it's not usually the sort of map you want to play like Charge Art and Model Archon on, or anything along those lines, so. Again, just going to be seeing this oracle coming in to harass him and find himself a creep human. Better than nothing does slow things down. Rolls over to the side there again. Lair just on the way up. Evo Chamber dropping down as well. This Stargate. Second one coming through. So again, going to be seeing that Matt Oracle play style. We'll see if he goes up to three Stargates. So he just sits on the two of them here. So now just sitting on the two of them could definitely be in a way to kind of approach this game. Not too much going on just yet. Again, a few links just gathering up towards the right hand side. Nexus drops on down. <coughs> Plus one, missile attack upgrade coming through here from TLO as well. So and just setting up into a lot of different bits and pieces as this layer will finish up in the main base. With Ringer coming down to help out with that. A few more Zergans on the way up, a couple more Spore Cores. Again, just setting up in towards this Mothership Core. Currently on the way out of this Nexus in the natural. There is indeed a third Stargate, so it will be, I mean, two Stargates obviously is obviously still going to be a commitment to Oracles, but the third Stargate really shows just how much of a commitment. The Sam TLO are not going to go for that Infestation Pit and the Spire sort of setup that he went for in game number one. He's going to go into the plus one missile upgrade instead and in towards the Hydra's Den. Which is the much more common way of dealing with these, uh, you know, of dealing with these oracles, especially initially in the game. Like, okay, sure, you see infestors and corruptors maybe coming up later in the game against oracles, but you usually always start out initially with the hydralisks at least, and then sort of go from there. So, see how this turns out. These oracles are going to gather up towards the top side. Thirteen hydralisks on the way at the moment. I'm just going to be seeing the, uh, yeah, the most gold ones. It's going to be about halfway done. Two more oracles on the way out, and uh, yeah, just waiting to see what's uh, gonna happen next. Forty, working its way through the uh, overlord here. And again, some hiders are gonna start pushing out onto the map. These oracles up to the top side. Looking to see where things are going to go, and again, yeah, just a few seconds towards the front as we continue to set up in towards this. And then these oracles looking to see what direction they might want to truly commit to. Fourth Stargate already for mana. I'm really going to commit to kind of the Sky Toss playstyle nice and early, but well, he's going to have to defend right now because this is a very powerful attack from Tielo coming across. He's got that plus one missile upgrade. He's actually going to be trying to start the fight here already. Overcharge is coming down now. Uh, these oracles are just going to clean everything up so easily, though. 
yeah, low, loses everything just immediately, right? I mean, this was fairly compared from him. Like, he's still only on 54 workers. He's still only making Ling Hydra. But, I mean, he barely killed anything here. Like, the resources lost. 3k to 900. If you look at the army supplies. And you can just see how, you know, how much that dropped off there for TLO so quickly. Man, they're really making things work. Because now the Orcs are coming in again. And Hydra's will just continue to drop. The problem is they drop so quickly. And there's just not enough for them to actually put out a decent amount of damage per second. To actually work their way through these oracles. And again, mana just... But I, I'm not sure what TLO was really hoping for here. Because against these mass oracles, these sort of, low, you know, smaller number of hydro attacks just generally don't work. So I'm not exactly sure what exactly is the plan from TLO. Like, maybe he just didn't scout this. Maybe he just didn't see this coming. Maybe he doesn't think it was going to be mass oracle again. But, you know, now the fact that it is really doesn't make his attacks make any sense. And obviously it's just not like TLO. You can't just blindly dive in for, you know, bits and pieces like that, so. We've seen these oracles continue to fly around here. And we're all just going to be seeing the Lings, Hydras, and Queens still sign up as well to see what else they can do. Swole's going to relocate, and I mean, I guess he's going to keep on trying to push forwards, but... I mean, what are you really going to be able to achieve here as, as, as TLO? Like, now he's going to fourth base, he's still just building four oracles at a time, because honestly, right now, he doesn't need anything else. And here's the thing, if all of his units are out in the center of the map, well, these oracles can definitely dive in and do damage over here. That said, it does mean that there's maybe a bit of an opening towards the natural for these hydras and the queens to push in. If the oracles are across the map too. Throwing down Stasis Ward to try and block a fourth base being taken top side. To the left side it is clear though still. I'm just going to see those creep teams continue to press on forwards at the moment. So, still just pressing on forwards, getting ready to go once more main tail is completely committed to this i mean it was kind of obvious from the get-go that he had no real intention of uh playing the longer game and obviously gets to that sort of point where you just can't really try and play the longer game can tail still make this work maybe somehow some way there is no charge on these zealots there's no upgrades either I mean, if there was ever a time that was maybe going to work it might be right now spores queens hydras will fight these oracles he starts to pull back a little bit the lings will stop the zealots from getting close but it's still just never going to be enough here. And the Hydras are melting yet again. And as the Hydras melt, the Zealots will continue to help clean up too. And that really is just about going to be it. I mean, TLO. A valiant effort. I mean, if this first push was a bit more like this, with creep and all sorts, uh, you know, and maybe you just hadn't lost so much already. Sure, maybe this works out. But mana, pretty insanely good in this CVP.